Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the New Day Podcast, where we just talk about life and faith and church and anything that we want to. And today we have a topic that's kind of close to our heart, I think. You know, we, we talk a lot on this podcast about kind of growing and leadership and excellence and spiritual growth, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to mix it up a little bit this week and kind of talk about uh, something a little bit softer. And that's basically how to keep a soft heart in a really hard world. And kind of what we mean by that is you can live in this world or you can work your job or be in your family. And there's a lot of things that kind of move you toward the cynical, I guess, or the more work performance based. But we're talking about, man, how do you stay close to Jesus? How do you keep a soft heart? Mm -hmm. That's not really something that's like celebrated, I don't think, in this Mm -hmm. world very much. Um, But it is celebrated in the Bible and Jesus kept a a soft heart, even in the midst of like sinful humanity. So we're going to talk about the things that keep us close and and have a soft heart and and maybe you can think about for your own life. So Pastor John, why don't you open it up, open us up and what's one of the things that keep you soft? Um, Yeah, I I like this. You know, I I like watching a lot of videos on YouTube and it's like I was watching one last night. It was like, you know, how I, you know, like got shredded <laughs> it's like some workout video one or one's like a time hack you know like mm-hmm. how to how to crush your schedule and so all that's good and we do that kind of stuff but yeah i think like just kind of i think we felt like we wanted to talk about this today and so um i think one of the things right now <clears throat> that is uh that means a lot to me is this idea of kind of working out of worship and i shared it with our staff this past week and um <clears throat> someone actually that we actually both know um actually um texted me maybe even a month or two ago, and they were saying, like, <clears throat> just, like, praying for me, obviously, because we're going through a lot, and was talking about even, like, almost kind of speaking some over my life of, like, you know, I've always kind of seen some, like, King David vibes in you, mm-hmm. you know, um, and so, you know, that, that, that always stuck with me, and because, I, I, you know, I, people have kind of spoken that to me before, or whatever, and, you know, and then, and then ironically, not even connected to that, we have, like, a series coming up where we're walking through the life of King David called Anointed Mess, yep. which is our next series, and so I think all that, like, it's, it's on my heart, and I just, and in so many of the Psalms, like, you preached Psalm 23 this past week, which was written by a guy named David in the Bible, who's one of the kings of Israel, and he's just known as being someone who, like, was a really great leader, and got a lot done, had a lot of responsibility, had a calling on his life, but just had an incredible devotional life with the Lord. He loved mm-hmm. God. Like I say, he's a great leader, he's a king, I mean, he made a lot of mistakes, as we'll see in the series. But he's like this king, he's this leader, but he's also like he sings and dances before God and has like a, a lot of emotional connection to the Lord. And so it's such a dynamic thing. And I, I do think that any way that all of us can imitate that in this time, it's a very powerful thing. I think a lot of times you think there's like the mystics on this side and then there's like the crush it pragmatists on this side. And it's like, how do you bring that together? And so a big thing for me that God has been putting on my heart um, really kind of felt like this last week, like, okay, God's doing something new in me. I feel it. Like he's, he's warming my affection for him. I didn't create this. Like I'm just receiving this. And a big part was just like, you know, I have a lot to do like you do, like we all do, like everyone listening to this, I'm sure you have a lot to do. The world's busy. You feel kind of burned out. Life is hard. Um, and I just felt this compulsion to like, I, I just need to like, just get with the Lord, get serious about that and worship him. Like give him praise for everything in my life. And not just say that, but like speak that out. God, I praise you or sing that out. You know, God, I praise you for what you've done in my life. I praise you for my blessings. Hmm. And so that idea of like working out of, out of worship is one of the things I've been doing where it's like, okay, look, I have a lot to do and I'm gonna do it, but I need to make sure that I have like, I'm worshiping the Lord corporately with my church and in different ways worshiping him with my money worshiping him like just whatever it takes i need to be worshiping god and praising him personally and i can i can like all of us i can be honest about my struggles and all the hard things but i have to give him praise too you know and if i do that and if i worship him like the same way that god would always like give david favor in his battles i believe that he will give us favor in our battles you know um you know i go back to was it john um 16 where he, Jesus says in this world you will have trouble but take heart I've overcome the world yeah. um, and so so once again I'm, I'm working like we all are I'm doing a lot but I am I'm really trying to make sure that I'm personally worshiping and that's one of the ways I'm keeping a soft heart hmm. what about you man yeah you know I was thinking about this and you know definitely meeting with the Lord and making that a priority keeps keeps your heart soft because you are connecting with him you see yourself for who you truly are and for him for who he truly is and that's what worship does 
Um, another thing for me lately um, that I've been trying to, I, I got to be intentional, just like you're intentional. Yeah. Um, on Sunday mornings, I'll use this as an example. Sunday mornings, there's a lot to do, you know, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, you know, maybe you're prepping for a message. And so you want to run through it one more time, you know, go, go find a secret place and run through it. Uh, but lately I've been trying to, there's a moment as people are coming in, maybe 30 minutes before service, where I will just kind of like take a deep breath. I'll set like my sermon down or wherever I need to do down. And I'll just walk into like the sanctuary, kind of our big uh, sanctuary space. And I'll just start walking up and just talking to people and ask them how they're doing. And I've, it, I've seen you do this. Yeah. This and in legit. particular, there, there's a couple of like senior adult ladies in our church who come every single Sunday. They've like yeah. never missed as long as they, as long as they've not been in the hospital, you know, the, for the five years I've been here, I'm thinking of two in particular, just Miss, Miss Ruby and Miss Juanita. And I just I go over there and I sit and talk with them because they, they ask, you know, they're just a blessing in my soul. You know, mm. they, they ask me how I'm doing, how my kids are doing, I ask them how they're doing. And it just reminds me that like, this is what it is about like these relational connections. And so uh, Miss Juanita, Miss Ruby, if you ever watch our podcast, just know I love you. And like those moments, those encounters that we have on Sunday morning um, where we connect with people, I think they keep my heart soft and actually gets me ready to get up on stage and to preach and to do those things because that's what it's about. That's so good. Yeah, I have one <clears throat> connected to that um, is um, the, also in addition to worship is this idea of like just like serving like Jesus. I just got back from a pastor's gathering, which I'll share a little about here in a little bit. But, um, you know, one of the things he said was, are you a are you a leader who serves or are you a servant that leads? And mm-hmm. dude, that just hit me like so deep. And, you know, I think one of the things for me is like I, for us, like as like the church <clears throat> grows and I mean, we're when you go from being like, you know, one church to like three campuses um, it, there's a lot, there's, there's more complexity, there's more decisions, there's more resources, there's more people. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a good thing to like raise up leaders and to delegate authority and like leadership and things like that. But sometimes within that, what can develop is like a, I should never have to like set up a chair kind of thing, or mm-hmm. I should never, you know, I, I should not be doing that anymore. And hopefully, even if you come to that conclusion, it, it's truly out of like, I can serve the church better this way, not like I'm too good for that, because that's evil. But there's a level of like, even practically, even if you're not meaning it like, well, I'm too good for that. It's like, no, it, there's a level of like, I, maybe I shouldn't do that kind of thing anymore. I can serve by, you know, praying for people or preaching or structuring things or all that kind of, coming up with a new initiative. And one of the things for me that's really kept my heart really soft is just like a, like serving. And for me, it's it's really a lot about my home life too right now. I mean, so my wife is walking through chemo; she has brain cancer, and so it's like she a lot. Some days she can't do much of anything. I mean, she's just trying to make sure she's okay. And so, like, I mean, I like I'm the only person in my house that can drive, and I have to tell people this because people forget this because I'm in such a different world. Like, I'm the only I have three little kids and a wife, and I'm the only one that drives, you know. So I'm full time transportation for my family. Uh, last night she wasn't feeling good, so she went to bed around six or whatever. And it's like Molly's got homework because these kids' their lives are still going on, and so I'm like cleaning the house, I do the dishes, I make their lunches, I, I make dinner, I go pick up the groceries help Molly with her homework, get her and the other one down because Halsey was able to get the baby down. But I mean, it's just like, and, and there are moments where I feel a level of like, I think it's frustration because it feels, there's a lot to do. It's not serving per se, but, but when I work through that, there's a level of like, this is really good for like my soul. And like in a weird way, even as you're talking about kind of talking to these, these ladies, it's like, Jesus would be doing these things, you know, Jesus would not be by himself huddled in a corner because he's got a whatever. It's like he, Jesus would totally set up a chair, you know, he would totally clean up a mess. He would totally Mm -hmm. talk to the people no one was talking to. And so I'm just reminded that like, like, I think whenever we serve, it keeps us like ground level. And my hope and prayer is no matter, you know, what God does in our church or in our lives or in our ministries that we never like lose that heart of like, man, I just want to serve, you know, because, because you've worked that sometimes like we talk to like other pastors or even like staff members, you get to a place where it's like, well, that's not in my job description yep. conversation comes up. And like, that's, that's dangerous territory because to some degree, yes, but also it's like, man, if you're going to be like, cause we've, I, I have known some people that have gone hard on that mindset and like, they're not ministry anymore because you just can't, you can't, you won't survive that way. You know, yeah. 
to where it's like, yeah, we've got things we have to do, but we're also a brotherhood. All these things have to get done. And I guess I'm seeing the value, not just in like me crushing my main objectives and my role that God has called me to do, but also like just in the totally random things that like no one else wants to do. And it's a, it's not, it, it, there's a value plus to me doing those things. Um, and I'm, I'm just witnessing God use that to keep my heart soft. Yeah, man. Actually, I was thinking, man, can you imagine if Jesus said, that's not on my job description? That, there's a sermon in there somewhere. Um, and that, that posture is so opposite to Jesus, just Philippians. Like, Jesus humbled himself to the point, yeah. you know, in obedience Ooh, to the point of the cross. And so, too, yeah. anyway, just, Dude, yeah. No, that'd be another good podcast. What was Jesus' job description? And, like, read, like, dude, that'd be pretty cool. Dude, Go that's to, like, good. New Testament. Dude, that'd be a sermon series. Like, Jesus' job is like, wow. Anyway. Britain, write it down. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, but dude, I, I do confession. I, I, maybe we all have that impulse, like not on my job description, whether it's at home. <laughs> maybe at home. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be doing that. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe we all oh, have that. the wrong time. <laughs> we all have that thought <laughs> at home. Can we edit that? No. no leave it, it in, leave it in. Real talk. Um, we all have that thought personally or at work, not on my job description. And dude, that can be applicable to so many things and just the posture of our hearts. You're talking about a soft heart, like what hardness of heart comes from that posture. And Jesus mm-hmm. said that is dangerous, spiritually dangerous for your soul. Um, so yeah, that, that's really good. Well, well and real quick. And I feel, even as you're saying that, I feel like I can physically in my body feel like the, the beauty and the health of like serving and like, you know, like not having the, it's not my job description, (laughs) but I also, I can feel the allure of the, well, no, like this is, you know, I can, Mm -hmm. I feel that. And so I think it's just kind of keeping that at bay, but but what else you got? Absolutely. Um, man, just a couple other things. Um, and a lot of the, they aren't things that I, do there are things that I'm like I, I invite other people to do for me uh, and lately I've been asking and just inviting more prayer into my life um, from people around me like you and from other staff members and especially like my wife like I, I've had Sarah the past few times that I've preached like pray over me and I saw you know there's a pastor I really respect who you know invites his wife to do that for him and I'm, I'm just a good reminder that it's like man I'm just I'm just a vessel and there's something about inviting someone to pray into the situation in your life that's very humbling, especially if you're not someone who like likes to receive a lot of help. Um, but I, I feel like it is biblical and it's good and, and it almost like it invites Sarah or that person to partner with Jesus in my life. And so that that definitely keeps me soft, just inviting prayer kind of into my life. So I've been doing that a lot. That's so good. <clears throat> Another th- thing I was thinking about was um, <clears throat> I think um, – meditating and taking time to think about the crucified Jesus, not just the resurrected Jesus. And I got to give a lot of credit to this, to um, an author and a pastor named Pete Scazzaro, who wrote um, The Emotionally Healthy Leader. Also, he has a whole series on emotionally healthy, like spirituality and the emotionally healthy uh, discipleship. I think this one actually comes from emotionally healthy discipleship. And really what it's talking about is like, how do you follow Jesus in a way that's like, truly integrates all of yourself. And I think that his theory is like a lot of church discipleship is a lot of value to it, but it's kind of emotionally stunted. And I think in the culture, what you're seeing is a lot of the issues today is like people are like very immature emotionally. And I'm not saying that necessarily causes anxiety or depression or mental health issues, but like it doesn't help them, you know, like the ability I've heard like to self-regulate, like I'm in a bad place and I can kind of work through in myself to get to a good place. I don't need someone else to come along like another person or whatever. And so well, he talks about following the, the, the crucified Jesus, not the Americanized Jesus. <clears throat> and man, it's just the value of reading other people because like you, you grow up in a context and everyone's doing their best and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, I realized like in America, there's a lot of triumphalism. It's like, we're going to win, we're going to overcome. And that's so much of the American narrative, which is kind of cool. And so it makes sense that in our context of Christianity, it's a lot about like triumphant and like, well, of course God's going to do what we ask him to do. We're going to win and the church is going to, you know, be awesome and all these (laughs) kinds of things. Like we're going to, we're going to do this. It's going to go good. You know, like the vision, the vision at the year is never like, we're going to decrease by 50% and like (laughs) this person's going to go rogue and that's our vision. It's always like, it's going to be awesome. But then it's always like kind of awesome because there's real stuff. And, and so I'm realizing that so much of that like depends on where you grew up in the world and the culture and kind of how that thing forms Christianity. And one of the things I'm inviting into my life is more time to think about that, like the crucified Jesus, because yes, 
Jesus was resurrected from the grave, and we celebrate that. Jesus was also crucified on a cross. And, and so often we talk, it's so funny, like we, sometimes we sit in our office and we're like, dude, like the world, everything feels crazy. And the, the, like, like almost every pastor we've ever known or looked up to is like imploded or out of ministry or done something wrong. And it just, it's just like we, we just live in this like crazy, like dysfunctional time, it feels like so often in the world and there's division everywhere and all this kind of stuff. And, and yet it's like, well, yeah, like life is hard and, <laughs> and there are challenges and sin is really in the world and sin creates chaos and death and dysfunction and yeah. all these things happen. And so it's like, well, what's going on? And it's like, well, we, we follow a, a crucified savior and you look at the life of Paul and he had a hard life. And so... I think one of the ways I'm keeping a soft heart is by, is by following the crucified Jesus because whenever you do that, you're not shocked by suffering. You're not shocked when it's hard. I mean, Jesus said, you know, they hated me. They're going to hate you. Yeah. And so I think in a weird way, it, like following the crucified Jesus keeps you from being cynical because if you are expecting everything to be perfect in your life and then life is hard or there's challenges, it's like, what's wrong? Or you get cynical as opposed to saying like, no, I don't need to be cynical because this is part of the journey and it's good. And when God brings healing, when God brings victory, when God brings what I want, praise him. And when he doesn't in any way, God can sanctify me and grow me and I can give him praise for that too. Yeah. I, actually, I, I've been feeling that similarly uh, in my own life, just like you know, not everything in the Christian life is up and to the right. And maybe you enter seasons of prosperity or of goodness where nothing wrong is happening, but those seasons are very short lived, you know, just like we read in Psalm 23 this past Sunday, you know, it's like Jesus will allow you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know? And so it, it, you've got to be prepared for that. And I had to like check my heart the other day because I personally, I am in kind of a good season with my family. We got our second, you know, son coming to the world. He's healthy, all that stuff. And I'm just like, man, I, the moment I start putting my trust in this or like connecting God's goodness to this particular season, like I'm in trouble because yeah. like pain, pain has come and pain will come, you know? And so for me, one way that I'm keeping soft in the season, it's just like trying to, you know, we ask people like, how are you doing really? And, and I try to ask people that, but just try to invite like all the, you know, the trouble that they're having in their life. And it feels like there's a lot of heaviness and it just in the relationships that we have in our church, just a lot of things going on. And we had the craziest Saturday this past Saturday yeah. where, you know, Gosh. just some tough, heavy conversations. And I just, I don't know. I just took a moment there that it is like to mourn that, you know, and to grieve and to lament. And you've been talking about this um, recently just with y'all's experience. And so just the, the lamenting and the grieving of the brokenness of the world and of people's lives. That's just like, mm -hmm. It, it's it's caused me to come to my knees and to go to Jesus and ask him why, but also to help. And so I've been feeling that lately. I mean, we were just talking. <clears throat> I called a guy whom, who's at our Pasadena church. Um, just be, we're, we're in staff meeting, and someone brings up that he had his leg, he had an infection and had his leg amputated. It's a guy in our church, you know. So I called him yesterday, and it's crazy. I'm, like, calling him and praying for him and just checking in with him. And he's an awesome guy named Tom. And, and then, it, but it, you know, it's crazy when his response is like, well, I, it's hard it is, Pastor. It's nothing like what you're going through, you know. And I'm just like, it's like we're, just, we're just like comforting each other and all this kind of stuff. But, but in a weird way, like, it's heavy stuff, but, like, sometimes it feels that way and sometimes it doesn't, you know. Like, it, 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 there really is a sense of, like, you know, like God does give you the strength you need for the battles that you face. And going back to King David and his life and, and all these, you know, people in the Bible that we, we look at, it's like, you know, incredibly hard things happened, but also at the same time, like, God is, God is there and he's providing what they need in the moment. And so that brings me to my, my kind of last thing, and, and uh, this is going to be a little longer because I want to share a story. But um, the last one for me is just, and I'm like anyone that's listening to this, like I, I mean it when I say like this, what I'm about to say could change everything in your life. And it's this idea of like getting reacquainted with the sovereignty of God the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God is this concept in the scriptures and in theology that God rules and reigns over everything. And there are bad things and there are hard things in the world that God allows for a moment that has a reason, a season and a reason in a sense. And, and I've been reacquainted with the sovereignty of God, and I've said this before, I think, that like that nothing has brought me more comfort in this time than the sovereignty of God and just reminding myself that like 
yeah, life is out of my control, but it's not out of his control. And just because it's out of your control doesn't mean it's out of his control. And I've been reminded of that. And it just, anytime I can feel myself sliding into despair or, you know, just not wanting to, to care about anything, when I remember the glory and the power and the goodness and the height of God and all of his goodness and his sovereignty, I'm like, okay, I can do this. You know, I, as long as I know that he's over it, you know, yeah. one, of the, one of our phrases recently is like, if God... If God has the power to open up a door, then I'm content with it being shut. Like I can be okay with that because I know we could open it and I trust him and there's a reason if he's not. Yeah. And one of the ways I've seen this recently, I, I just got back from this, was we had a guy, um, long story short, like so we, whenever we got um, Halsey's diagnosis and went to the hospital, we're at MD Anderson and we have this like, you know, obviously brilliant neurosurgeon who's meeting with us and we were praying the whole time, God, just be with us, like be with us, like show, remind us you're with us in whatever way you want to, because this is really hard. And uh, we, we started meeting with our neurosurgeon, obviously she's brilliant. She was at the Mayo Clinic, now she's here and all this kind of stuff. And we kind of start probing like kind of what she believes spiritually, you know, because we love Jesus and we want other people to know Jesus. We're kind of probing, it turns out like she's a Christian. And we start having conversations when she finds out that I'm a pastor and she's like, actually, she got um, serious about her faith when she was in Florida, um, when she was working at the Mayo Clinic uh, in Jacksonville. Um, and she starts telling us about this pastor that blessed her in this church called 1122. And this pastor is named, guy named Joby Martin and, um, and even married them, which is a really big church. I mean, the fact that he would marry them personally was a, was a beautiful, like servant hearted thing, you know, um, and she's just kind of going off about how, how you know, great he was, how much he, he was a, a big deal in her life or whatever. And then we go to this event today, and we've been praying as well, like, God, just keep reminding us that you're with us. And we go to this event here in Houston, a long ways away, and that guy, Joe Martin, is preaching. And I go <laughs> up to him, and I'm like, man, the fact that you're here, I told him the whole story. This lady got, you know, got saved in your church and got serious about her faith, and you married uh, her or whatever, and, and now she was being a blessing to us here in Houston, done a great job for us. I mean, we text her all the time. Like, I text my neurosurgeon. My wife's neuro like, this is like MD Anderson neurosurgeon. I, I just text her right now, and she would just text me back. I'm actually going to text her a picture of me and him. But anyway, like, I, I go there, and, like, I, I start telling him everything that happened, and, you know, you'll never believe this. Like, and he, like, looks at me, and he's like, do you, do you have little kids? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, he's like, I start welling up. And then my eyes start welling up. And he's like, dude, like, we're going to fly you guys out to like Florida. We're going to pay for everything. We're going to, you know, we're going to take care of you for a week and just bless you in any way that we can. And so I start like just crying in the middle of this gather, gathering. I mean, everyone's fellowshipping, but I'm like crying. And he, this, this guy bear hugs me. <clears throat> he's a big pastor, burly dude, just bear hugs me. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, and, and it was another reminder of like, <clears throat> you know, you know, you're going through whatever you're going through, and God's just like, he's weaving it all together in ways you, you could never know. He's, he's weaving it together, and just at the moment when you think, I can't do this anymore, or how, how could I ever get beyond this, um, God gives you a bone, dude. He, he, <laughs> he, he gives you something, and, you know, I always go away from those moments, and I, and I write it down. I remember, like, like, remember the faithfulness of the Lord. There's at this point, dozens of things I could look back on our journey here and in our lives about the ways God's been faithful. And so, I, but I just bring all that back to like the sovereignty of God. Like I didn't, I'm at this thing today and I didn't decide who's speaking. I didn't decide the date it was going to be. I didn't decide who our neurosurgeon was going to be. I didn't decide any of these things. Yeah. And yet the Lord just continues to sovereignly like work it together. And so my encouragement to anyone is if you don't, if you don't see it yet, like just keep waiting because like God is faithful, God is sovereign. And, and once you know that he is sovereign and once you remember that, it keeps your heart soft from all of the possible hardening of your heart. Because I mean, the Bible talks about hardening of your heart, how bad that is. But the ways that like cynicism or disappointment or dysfunction or someone sinning against you or you blowing up your own life in one way or another, um, it keeps your heart from that. And so um, I just think acquainting yourself with the sovereignty of God is important. And I think it's important because in our world, we don't hear much about that. Like even the church used to hear more about that probably. So probably it just means we need to do a series on sovereignty coming up pretty soon. But um, God is sovereign. And because he is sovereign, that means that we can walk through anything in life uh, with a soft heart until like the day that we meet him in glory. Wow. I mean, that just happened like an hour before this podcast. Yeah, dude. I mean, I was, I was, I was literally crying in this guy, this, this grown man's arms um, <laughs> two hours ago with my mentor standing next to me, you know, at this big pastor's event, you know, 
it was crazy. But, but I will say too, man, it reminded me, even what you were saying about like walking with the people in the church and the people you're mentioning, like, you know, like in a lot of ways you don't control your emotions. Like it happens. I've learned that in this. I never decide I'm going to cry right now. It just, it comes like a flood. Mm -hmm. And when this guy looked me in the eye and like, said, I love you, I care about you, and I'm going to bless you. It just flowed. And so it's almost like, hmm. like, like the Spirit was loving me through this man, and it, it was just powerful. And it does just give me a lot of encouragement to like, you know, I'm all about the, we got to get stuff done, I'm all about that. But I'm just telling you, I'm like, man, if, 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 you, if we can find a way to like consistently just like love people and love our community, th there is... There is a level of love that surpasses the cynicism, the doubt, the whatever, and it's a very real kind of thing. And so I just experienced that, you know, and as a pastor, you know, as a pastor, so often we're kind of dispensing that out to everybody. And it just reminded me of like, man, like one, one person deposits something like that into me one time a month. Mm. I, I, I can do this, you know, I, I, I can, I can look in your eyes too. I mean, like, and same thing, I mean, I, I was calling a guy yesterday, guy's leg amputated and he didn't know I was going to call him, you know, I said, anything you need, man, let us know. Yeah. So I just think the beauty of like loving each other and, you know, my hope is as the church continues to do that through this chaos, um, you know, we'll keep soft hearts and keep trusting the Lord and God's just going to, God's going to use it because there's nothing else like that in the world. You don't find it in politics. You don't find it on the freeways. You don't find it in probably your workplace. Um, but you can find that kind of love in the church and it's a testament to just the love of Jesus and the goodness of God. Yeah. Man. Imagine if he thought he was too busy to do that. Yeah. Ooh. He could have said, that's even what Bruce said. He was like, dude, he, this guy got up here. He took a flight at four in the morning to be here, and he's flying right back. He's like, you know, this, he, yeah, he's like, he's, you know, he, and he, he doesn't need this, you know. Yeah. But, um, but once again, the sovereignty of God, God's weaving it all together in a powerful way. And um, yeah. I'm just so grateful for it. Yeah, man. You talk about this a lot, how we are the hands and feet of Christ. Like the Bible says we are that. And <laughs> it's like, what if we actually were that, <laughs> you know? And, and that deposit that you talked about, it was also a deposit in his heart, that interaction, you know, that is like very memorable. And like, we have the opportunity to do that if we just slow down and, you know, listen to the spirit. So man, that there's a lot from that. There's yeah. a lot from that. Praise God. So Man, that's all I got. Yeah, man. I'm uh, once again just thankful for this platform. Um, you know, if you do listen, I mean, I know we're talking about getting like a, you know, more of a formal podcast up and running. And so hopefully the Lord and his sovereignty will be able <laughs> to give us time to actually do that. Um, but until then, we just like kind of filming stuff and uh, we just hope it's a blessing to you. And if it's a blessing to you, feel free to share it with someone who might be blessed by it as well. Yeah. See you guys.